In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate one of the latest features of the chess playing website uh, called Light Chess. Uh, I've been watching this website um, and the server for a while, and uh, the recent additions have really made me switch over to this website, at least for uh, a test. And um, I gave it a good try, and I've been enjoying playing on it for the last couple of weeks and, and I think it's one of the best places online to play chess. The latest feature that I'm referring to is uh, the ability to learn from your mistakes uh, in the games that you play. So I will today walk you through how to use this feature and uh, it's very handy. I think it's been really um, missing uh, in the different sets of software that are available today like no other chess software that I know about has ever really enabled chess players to do something like this and I, and I think it's quite amazing that, that, that this website is um, allowing players to play there for free um, but enough talking and I'll just um, walk you through this feature so this is a list of the games that I played recently so I'm gonna look at a game that I lost and then I'm gonna look at the game that I want and uh, show how to learn from your mistakes in either case. Um, the only thing you really have to do is to play a game on the Light Chess, mm, on the Light Chess website or in the app and then y you just have to request the computer analysis which is pretty easy to find as a, as a button or as a link. So for these two games I already have the computer analysis pre-made and I'm gonna go now to the analysis board in the computer analysis window you can see the graph of how the evaluation has uh, jumped around in this game A and the new feature that I'm really excited about is this link to learn from your mistakes so let's see how this works uh, as you can see there was quite a lot of shifts in the evaluation so there must have been a lot of mistakes here uh, since I was playing with the white side I'm gonna learn from my mistakes um, as you can tell I can ma I have made quite a few mistakes here so let's see um, the first mistake that I made here was after I took here with the bishop and the king went to h7, I played queen to h5. So the computer, the website is telling me that I played queen to h5 and is telling me find a better move. It's going to use the computer evaluation to decide what's a better move. And as you can see this position is very tactical and that really gives a, a good opportunity um, to let the engine automatically decide for us um, where we could have improved on our play. So I played Queen H5 with the idea of setting up a discovered check, but obviously there were a lot of other options here. So now I'm just going to try to figure out what I could have played instead. The other obvious option is of course Queen takes F7. Um, I'm just going to try also here to look for the candidate moves and see if there's really anything else. The, th the thing about this feature is that you don't really have to tell um, what move uh, really leads to or what, uh, you know, ex is the exact evaluation of the position. You basically just have to consider the best um, options that you have and look for the candidate moves and then use your intuition to find the best one. So on the first shot I'm thinking about just taking here with the queen but on the second consideration I also realized that this would still lose that that piece on h7 and, and maybe this uh, isn't the best maybe I should look for something else on the second thought I'm finding that well I can also just move the bishop away I can just move the bishop to f5 uh, I don't really see anything else um, maybe capturing on c5 is interesting but that just seems a little um, unthematic because that moves the queen, sorry, the, the knight away from the the center of the of the play. So it's really the choice between queen to f7 and bishop to f5. The only problem with bishop to f5 uh, is that it's it allows black to play g6 and possibly trap my bishop yet again because then if I go here he goes f5 and that leads to so I'm just going to use my intuition and try this. And apparently, since this this is not immediately the move that the that the computer had prepared as the answer, then I must have gone wrong. 
So since I had no other idea, I'm just going to try this. And this is all, wait, well, now it finds that this is the best move and it allows me to move on. Although, of course, things are maybe not so complicated, not so simple yet. So I'm going to move on to the next mistake. The next mistake was that I played queen to g4. And this was also not the best move. Again, it's about considering the options here. What else could I have done here? I was really short on time here and I was trying to simplify the position as much as possible. The other option that's very natural is just to play g3, forking the bishop and the, sorry, the knight and the, and the queen and forcing the exchange on h3, but that's what allowed me to pick up the pawn on f7 with really promising play. And there's also, looking at it now, there's also a shot on g5, g3, takes, 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 knight g5 hitting the... Um, queen and the bishop. So I'm just gonna guess that this is g3. This is a good move. Moving on, uh, here I took on f7 and I allowed white and I allowed black to take on f on g2. Um, there must have been other better options. The most natural one is probably just g3. Let's try that. It's still a good move. It might be not the best move but it's a, it's a much better move than what I played. And that's that's the point of this feature. It um, doesn't require you to play the best move, but it allow, but it just wants to make sure that the move you suggest is is much better than the move that you actually played in the game. So rook eight was actually a mouse slip, so that's a little um, uh, funny here. But uh, during the game, I actually considered just rook to e seven, and that's what. I should have played, moving on to the next move, here I played c4 just also because I was uh, really low on time, but that's an indicator that I shouldn't have gone to this complicated position with so little time. What else could white do here? The problem with c4 was that also that pawn was going to be running loose and I didn't really think of that initially. Uh, what else can I play here? I could also play knight to f5, hitting this pawn. I could also try to let my king come out. This might have been a better idea. I'm just gonna try knight to f5 as an aggressive move. Apparently it's good enough. And here was the last mistake that I made. That yeah. I let my king go too far from this this past h pawn. So I think any other move would have been better. And now I play bishop g2. To be honest, the at this point the position is already really hopeless for, for white so it doesn't really make much sense to look for suggestions here so here I'm just gonna um, view the solution to see what the computer suggests it's, it's still losing but it's still interesting to see what was better so here it tells me that I'm done reviewing white mistakes I can do it again which I don't want to I could also review black mistakes which I might do some other time but not right now so I'm just gonna close this and I consider this good enough for this training session. I I had a lot of mistakes that I made in this game, which is why I lost, but the game was also very complicated. So I'm going to move on to the other game, the game that I won, also a tactical game, analysis board. And here the evaluation has shifted quite a bit, as we can tell. Um, here, uh, unfortunately, there's no way to choose who's, uh, whose mistakes you're learning from. So I'm going to... I hope they add the ability to, to do this in the future. So I'm going to... Well, actually, now it's, it's smart enough. It's picking up my moves. So anyway, I'm going to learn from my mistakes here again. I played queen to e8. The idea was to hit the spawn and to also possibly transfer the queen over here to the king side. What else could I have done here? Apparently there was something tactical that I must have missed. It's not entirely obvious what it was. I was also probably contemplating something like a 5. Um, another interesting idea is maybe bishop to c5. be threatening knight to c4 in some lines, but not really just yet. Maybe there was also immediate bishop to h3 and then transferring the queen to uh, 
that part of the board. So I'm just going to go with the flow here and try this. No, apparently this wasn't this wasn't so great. What else can white can black play here? Uh, on a second thought, there is really a big deal, a big issue with that pawn being so weak. So maybe I could have exploited this a bit better. Maybe if I just go bishop to c5, this pawn is really in trouble. Yes. So apparently, just doubling up against this pawn was the best. So if the if the knight goes here, probably black has some other ways to put the pressure on that pawn. And apparently, if knight e1 is the only way to defend it, then I probably could play knight c4. So it makes sense that this is a good move. So here I played g5, and I was really panicking here. I really couldn't quite tell what the heck to play. The interesting thing about this position is that white doesn't really threaten that much. So, because if he takes on f4, then I take here. Quite possibly still the idea of putting pressure on d3 was very good here, so maybe I should have just done something like this. No, it doesn't like that. Maybe there was a better way. Maybe starting with bishop c5 is still a good idea. No, that's still not the way to go. I'm really guessing here I need to maybe look for something else. Um, the other thing is that you can tell the computer evaluation here, so it went from black being slightly better to the black being much worse. So maybe it's not really looking for a, you know, a win. It's, it's just looking for a way to not get worse here. So what possible ways could there be to not get worse? Just moving the knight away is probably not going to make it. Just moving the queen to g5 maybe is an idea. I'm just going to skip this one and view the solution. R well, this rook to d8. I really can't quite tell the difference between which rook goes, but I'm just going to... This was not the most important part of the game, so I'm going to ignore this for now. Again, bishop to g4 was played, but maybe there was something better. I wanted to capture an f3 and then put that knight on d3 on d4 and I completely overlooked white's next move in a way the problem was that that bishop here was really loose and that that could have cost me the pawn um, in many variations I just wanted to move the king away from all the possible checks so maybe this was the way to go here no apparently it wasn't The other idea was to possibly defend my queen for some variations and be able to play pawn to g4. Yet another idea is to maybe exchange that knight and just put this knight over here. Is this any good? No. Yet another idea was to put this knight over here, so maybe I should have done this. No, it doesn't like that. I'm gonna view the solution. Queen to g6, just maintaining some advantages of black's position here, I guess. So here I played c5, which I think allowed rook to b1 and potentially getting the spawn. So it's obviously a problematic move. At this point already black is up a uh, pawn, so many, many moves would probably be enough to win here. But the issue is that this pawn is under attack and this and this pawn is also under pressure. Um, however, I probably don't have to go defensive here and maybe I could do something just as simple as this. Winning one of these pawns in exchange and ignoring the attack on this pawn. And that's the right answer. So I'm done reviewing black mistakes and um, I think I learned a few things here. There... Um, 
they weren't as uh, bad the blunders in this game as in the previous one but um, a lot of the time the most natural moves are the best uh, one idea that I consistently was overlooking here is is putting pressure on this D pawn and this could really have um, resulted in many improvements to my play in this game uh, the the benefit of this of this feature is that as soon as you play the game you can generate the computer analysis and within a minute it's it's available to you and while the game is still fresh in your head you can go through the game and learn a lot from your mistakes um, I should probably touch a little bit on um, some other features of light chess since I'm already looking at this and uh, this game didn't have a very interesting opening but in the previous game um, in the analysis board I could um, also review some other things in addition to the evaluation graph this is already suggesting to me where things got really interesting and where you know the players were making all kinds of blunders also um, as I mentioned the opening in this game was kind of interesting and um, I can turn off the engine here but uh, a very important feature of, of light chess is um, the opening explorer and being able in your browser to just look at your games that you just played and immediately see the, the reference database that could be coming from um, think there's an option yeah there's an option to decide if you um, if you want to display the light chess games or if you want to look at some um, over the board games um, both are useful and here I can see that for example Dmitry Andrakin has um, played this as white and um, in in the majority of the games White here was playing rook f to e1, not the move that I played, rook a to e1. And and this is important because later on in the game, in different variations, my rook was really here misplaced on um, f1. I thought that the you know it's better to move this rook uh, to move this rook over here because then any captures here would be without check but it turns out this is not really an important consideration what is sometimes more important in these lines is also that this a pawn is protected and if, if black comes out with um, queen to a5 it's beneficial to have the rook still only one and some lines to have um, the a2 pawn guarded so clearly I went astray here with rook um, a to e1 and uh, you know if, if I'm going to continue playing the system such um, you know, simple ideas are useful to understand. You can also click on the on the games that are shown in the reference database, and you can see basically h how the games continue. And this is one interesting example. And and here we get this typical end game between the two top players, and we can analyze this as much as we want. But um, I just wanted to show that there is this very useful feature in light chess and you basically get uh, everything you need you have the ability to turn this into a study and add your variation and comments you have the computer engine that shows you the evaluation and uh, you can also use the game as a um, as a starting point uh, for your training and, and learn from your mistakes um, these all these features and uh, the fact that all these features are available on e every game that you play is really uh, a great um, uh, a great and very useful tool that uh, I think uh, should make many chess players consider switching to light chess and making it an even better uh, play to play chess online.